Are you suffering from terrible or debilitating um, pubic symphysis dysfunction pain, either during pregnancy or postpartum? I know it can be so terrible. This is very common for pregnancy and postpartum, and I keep getting requests on how to fix the pain of pubic symphysis dysfunction and exercise that you can do. So today I'm gonna to talk about four steps or four strategies on how to stop the pain from pubic symphysis dysfunction and exercises. This is something that I teach in my pre and postnatal fitness classes, and we are gonna be working on stabilizing, strengthening, and protecting that pubic symphysis joint. And if you do the exercises consistently and do the steps, then you can start reducing the pain very quickly. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jessica Pumple. I am a registered dietitian, a certified diabetes and bariatric educator, as well as a pre and postnatal fitness instructor. And we put out new videos every Wednesday. So if you are pregnant or postpartum, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and ding the bell to make sure you get notified every Wednesday when we put out a new video. Today's video is general information only, and if you are having concerns with your pubic synthesis, I recommend that you see your doctor or your pelvic floor physiotherapist for individual medical recommendations. Just so we're all on the same page, the pubic synthesis is a very stiff synovial joint that is um, between the two sides of the pelvis. And normally it only moves about two millimeters, but if it moves more than this or less than this, then it can cause pain, grinding, cracking. And with the hormonal changes in pregnancy, with the relaxin hormone that is causing the ligaments to and tendons to relax, to open up the pelvis, to let out the baby, this is very common during pregnancy and after. If you have pubic symphysis dysfunction, you may feel pain in the pubic area or maybe in the groin or in the inner thigh or even in the very sort of back of the tailbone area. It may feel like grinding or clicking. You may feel the pain while walking or going upstairs or trying to roll over in bed or you might feel it when you're trying to lift anything heavy or you might also feel it intervaginally. Let me know in the comments what your level of pain is on a scale from zero to 10. Zero being no pain, one being mildly annoying, five being moderate and starting to affect your um, activities of daily life, and 10 being very severe, intolerable, and a trip to the emergency room. The four steps or strategies to relieve pain with pubic symphysis dysfunction are one, stabilization and strengthening exercises, two, to use ice, three, proper positioning and protecting the joint, and four, manual therapy. Stabilization and strengthening exercises include exercises to strengthen the core, especially the inner core, the pelvic floor, the hip adductors, the latissimus dorsi, as well as the glutes. Exercises that stabilize and strengthen these muscles and that are safe for pubic symphysis dysfunction are exercises like toe taps, bridge, kegels, quadruped rows, and quadruped hip extensions or donkey kicks. Next week in part two of this video, I'm gonna do an exercise class, including all these stabilizations and strengthening exercises for pubic symphysis dysfunction that you can follow along to. And I will link to that up there as soon as the video is up and ready. Step two or strategy two is to ice the area. So icing the area for about 15 minutes can help numb and dampen the pain and reduce inflammation. Step three or strategy three is proper positioning and protecting the joint. So basically avoiding anything that is causing extra pain or that grinding or clicking feeling. For transitional movements, so moving from one position to another, you wanna try and keep your knees together and to keep your hips as even as possible. So your knees are together and you don't wanna be having your hips out of alignment, but having your knees together and putting pressure through both of your feet if possible at the same time during any transition movements. 
When you're walking, you can try to take smaller steps. And of course, going slow and steady is always helpful. If you can, avoid stairs, take the elevator or an escalator if you can. But if you have to go upstairs, go up sideways and take steps up sideways, keeping your knees as close together as possible. Sleeping on your side with a pillow between your legs can be helpful. So if I grab a pillow here and you're sleeping on your side like this, with a pillow between your legs, that can be helpful. And I know rolling over can be an issue as well. So there are two ways that you can deal with rolling over. So again, trying to keep your knees together and your hips as even as possible so that you're not doing this. And to roll over, one thing you can do is sort of picture pressing out through your heels with the same amount of pressure and then inching over. So you're here, and then you're going to tuck up there, roll a little bit, and sort of shimmy your feet, keeping the weight even as you move over like this, keeping it as even as possible. So that might be helpful. Or the other strategy that I saw a physical therapist do as well that some women find helpful is to activate your glutes and open up into a clamshell and then use your glutes to move you over as well. So you're using your glute muscles. So let me know in the comments which of those strategies helps you roll over the best. Step four or strategy four is manual therapy. And so you'll have to see a pelvic floor physiotherapist for this, but I highly recommend it and have seen amazing results. And basically they can do massage or adjustments um, internally or externally to help mobilize and relieve the joint. I know this is a huge problem for pregnancy and can cause so much pain that really affects your quality of life. If you have strategies that have helped you or worked for you, please go down to the comments and share with our community. I love how you guys help each other out and share tips and tricks with each other. And I will also link to the exercise class of exercises that you can do daily to help strengthen and stabilize that joint to start reducing pain immediately. And my bonus tip is to use a belly band or belly support, especially during pregnancy, as this can help take some of the pressure off of your pelvis. We have lots of free resources for both pregnant women and postpartum women. If you are pregnant, you can go down to the description box and grab the guide on how to cope with pain in labor. And we have lots of tools and strategies to help cope with pain in labor if you're hoping to have a natural labor. And if you're postpartum, I have the complete guide on how I healed my four finger diastasis recti gap and help stop um, urinary incontinence or peezing, peeing a little bit when you sneeze or jump, as well as when I was able to close my diastasis recti gap, close my mummy pooch. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, ding the bell to make sure you get notified every Wednesday when we release a new video, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment all of those things really help me out and lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the videos and helps me continue to keep making free content for you. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I really love being with here with you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.